Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> You guys hopefully heard the bilingual babies episode and we'll get the reference there. Yes, yes. <laughs> and in a while we'll get Noah to do the intro. Oh, man, that's going to be funny when he actually starts um, being able to mimic full phrases. Yeah, it'll be cute. So, today's episode I wanted to talk about Joanna and the news with her because that has been a bloody roller coaster, hasn't it, Carol? Yeah, yeah. It's been interesting, um, a bit scary at times, but um, getting better. For references, this- was all sort of happening during the moving house stage. So, we did an episode previously on moving houses and how much mm. of a headache that was. So, for so context, for reference, when we were told we had to move house, I think it was the same week we found out this um, bad yeah, news about much. Joanna. So, do you want to tell them what happened there? So, I went for an ultrasound. Um, 28 weeks. 20, 28 right? weeks, um, which was uh, an extra sort of ultrasound because my placenta was- um, covering the cervix and mm-hmm. then my doctor wanted to see at 28 weeks where it was if it had you know changed position and everything um so i went for the ultrasound and pretty much the person didn't say anything everything looked fine but then she came back they always check with the doctor i think that who does the um the ultrasound is like a technician or something. Yeah. Generally, they'll be yeah. technicians. Sometimes they're doctors because in Melbourne, I had a doctor doing it. Yeah. But anyway. Well, the doctors can do it because yeah, they've got yeah. to check it. But usually, the technicians are the ones who do the easy grunt work and then tell the doctors if there's yeah. something they need to check out. I think it's more and serious. Then she went to talk to the doctor and came back um, and said, well, I think you should, <laughs> I think you should go to the hospital. Do, we, do you know where it is? <laughs> and- I mean, I mean, I'm not saying she was awful or anything, but there was one thing she didn't quite explain what was happening because I probably, I think she probably didn't know mm-hmm. how serious it was. Well, and to pause you there, that's the kind of frustrating thing with the technicians. Yeah. I don't think they are in a position to say anything. So, if they yeah. see anything that they think is bad or that they're worried about, mm-hmm. they have to go and talk to the doctor and the doctor has to be the one to deliver the news to you and, and, yeah. and have that conversation. So, quite often they're stuck between a rock and a hard yeah. place where they're kind of like, uh, you just need to do this, go to the yeah. hospital or, or just speak to the doctor. I'm sorry, I can't tell you more. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't wait to get rid of me. It was so interesting because my brain just froze and I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And she was like, oh, no, because we noticed that your baby's like a bit smaller than she should be. And I'm like, Okay, is this, is this an issue? And, and previous to that, everything was fine. Everything was fine, absolutely fine. She was perfect. Yeah, um, the and baby the, that is. Yes. And then I was like, okay, I, I guess I'll just go to the hospital. And who? what do I do when I get there? Like, I just show up and say, hey. <laughs> and then she was like, oh, no, they know you, you're you coming. And that's when I was like, oh, sh- they made a call to the hospital. Like, mm-hmm. call the hospital. She's they on said, her way. I'm like, oh, gosh. Okay. And you were waiting outside with Noah in the car. We'd done about five um, circuits of the car park by that point. Yes. And I was like, <laughs> because, you know, if you have kids, you probably know yeah. that you organize your day based on what time my child has to sleep and when they're going to they, eat. They, when they're going to eat and yeah. everything. And I'm like, now it's like 5 30. I have to go to the hospital. I have no idea when I'll leave. Mm-hmm. And my son is outside. He has to have dinner and he has to go to sleep and P- Peter has to work. And I think you asked, can I just go tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, I did. I was like, oh, I actually said, you know, my husband is outside. Can I just <laughs> call them and book a, an appointment? And she was like, I think she'll go right now. Which, looking back, it would have been fine, considering yes. that nothing, nothing really bad has happened. Yes. Knock on wood. But um, anyway, continue with the story. Yes. <laughs> she said I just had to go. And I was like, all right. And then I got there. I thought, oh, maybe the baby's small. Look, okay, mm-hmm. baby's small. Yep. I can't see, you know, anything incredibly concerning about that. <laughs> so, this is what she said before no, you no, went no. to the hospital? I was, I was went, thinking okay. in the car, I was like, okay, we'll go to hospital. The doctor's probably going to talk to me and yeah. that's it. And then I ended up staying there for four hours. Well, we were in the car for, I think, an hour, an hour and a half. And then you mm. were like, yeah, just go home. This is taking, yeah. this is going to take forever. And they're like, they've got all these other, um, you know, the doctor has to go to all these other people. Mm-hmm. So, he has to triage everyone and So, they out. pretty much sent me to this um, monitoring sort of area yeah. where they're not go- only going to check on your baby, but it, when you finish, they have to monitor the baby for a certain amount of time. Yeah. It could take 20 minutes. It could take 
two hours. <laughs> so, this was using the stuff that you had on you when you were giving um, birth to yeah. Noah, when you were in labor last time, right? The stuff that monitors the heart rate. Ha yes, yes, and yeah. movement. Yeah. Um, so, I stayed for a long time. The place mm -hmm. was quite busy. And then- Just listening to women giving birth, right? <laughs> screaming, <laughs> screaming everywhere. It doesn't really bother me, but uh, it's quite- if, you, if it's a first baby, I would say it's quite scary. It's pretty full but, on. Yeah. Um, anyway, but the scary thing was, I don't know what's happening. I'm being monitored. Yeah. Someone just told me there's something wrong with my baby. And I know. <laughs> the poor midwife came in and I was there, you know, all the, the monitors on me and I just started crying. <laughs> I was like, I just want to know what's happening. Mm. She was like, no one has talked to me. I was like, no, like I'm literally coming back from an ultrasound and I'm just here and mm -hmm. she's like, okay, I'll get the doctor to come and talk to you. And blah, that's, blah, blah. again, she probably yeah. can't say much. Yes. She's just stuck. Yeah. Yes. Um, then after many hours, I had to wait for the doctor <laughs> who was also helping with women giving birth. They, they had an emergency. I don't know what happened. Yeah. To pause you there, do you want to tell them who the doctor was? He was your high school friend? Yeah, yes. we went to high school together. <laughs> yeah. And so, when Noah was on the way, we had seen him once. Yes, yeah, so for an Dr. appointment. Dr. Ed from Geelong, thank yeah. you. And yeah. um, he was like, oh, Pete, what's going on? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, with the second baby now, he was also- Around, he was, so he was great. Huh? And then he said, oh, you guys are doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> You're smashing it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's so, you know, one of those people who you makes you, they just make you think that they chose the right profession. He's a lovely, because lovely dude. Because I can't imagine, he could, I mean, again, I'm just saying that because now I know everything's fine. But like, if he was telling me the most horrible thing, yeah. I would be like probably 50% karma around him around him yeah. than someone else's because he, he's a very yeah. big guy too yeah. he's huge he, <laughs> he he's is. a bit overweight he's probably about six foot something yeah. and but he's so gentle and he, he and is. speaks to you and is so happy he's such a friendly lovely dude yeah just one of those gentle giants oh, i know I loved yes he was a great guy. he's great mm. and then he told me look um your baby is significantly small. In the first percentile, right? Yes. So, very there. small. It's very small, um, which means that he literally said that we would have to take up, take over your life a little bit. <laughs> 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 we need to know why this baby is so tiny. Yeah. So, there are a few things that might explain it. One, the, the most common one is um, placenta issues. Yeah, where the baby's not getting as much blood and yes. nutrients as usual and grows slower as a yes. result. The other one, well, my, I think on top of all that, it's like if you are a small person, you mm -hmm. might have a small, you, in, your body's not going to make a baby that you can't deliver. You know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be like a um, a Great Dane having a, no. a child with a chihuahua, right? You'd be like, good God. You I know. Know. Imagine if your husband was the mountain from Game of Thrones. <laughs> so you'd be God. like, Jesus, no. <laughs> so, you feel, you feel the parents are, you know, relatively small yeah. you're not going to have a massive baby unless you know you have other issues like diabetes or other yeah. things that might explain it um but then placenta issues and then infection um genetic issues yeah, which was, was the main terrifying the main factor terrifying right one. yeah so he was like we would just have to investigate and get you know and we need to know what's happening and um there are a couple of things you have to do like i have a bunch of growth scans like every two mm -hmm. weeks and I have monitoring. Mm -hmm. I was having monitoring for like two, like twice a week and now- You're going to the go hospital once. like two or three times a week for yes. about a month. Yes, um, but we need to know. And he was like, as far as I can tell you, she's great, mm. she's fine, she's coping. So, they were doing the Doppler scans too, Doppler which, scans. which checks the blood Floor. flow in and out. Of and the fluid. baby and the fluid, yeah. yeah. And, and showing that everything was normal, it was that she was just very small. Yeah. And small babies have tend to have some, like, difficulties. Mm. She Like, when they're born, they need more assistance. They might have a hard time trying to feed and breathe and other things. Anyway, so from that, I just um, did the... My main concern was that she have a genetic um, mm -hmm. issue because well, I don't know if we've spoken about it on the podcast but that's a big thing for us that yeah. and the doctor was very open about it depending on what it is or might be depending on what it might be because he we were not sure she you know she had anything 
um, we might have to get the genetic, is it the genetic team, I think, to talk to you yeah. and explain the circumstances and you might you guys might have to come to a decision with termination with termination with abortion yeah, yeah. i mean and you, you know some of you guys will probably well obviously not agree with abortion because i'm sure there are quite a few of you who are religious yes um i think the thing the reason that uh, well firstly neither of us is religious um but but secondly the thing that would put abortion on the table would be that i know of people in my family and outside who've had children with um well had babies that have had significant genetic defects mm -hmm. or genetic issues and they've carried them to term mm -hmm. given birth to them only for the baby to effectively be terminally ill and die yeah. within hours or days after giving birth and that is something that I would just not want to go through personally. Yeah. I would much not, rather, yeah. yeah, doing it earlier than having to Deal have you go for months knowing that was coming. Too, and right? going through uh, birth, like, and that's not judging anyone. Like, no. I, from a mother's perspective, I completely understand your attachment to this being. Like, your, it's your baby. It's inside you. Like, you just want to hold it. Mm. But it, that's a very, very personal um opinion and decision for us like yeah. that's our very um it would be excruciating for us but well, um, unfortunately we didn't yeah. have to make it so you yes can, you can <laughs> we can move quickly on from very that topic quickly. <laughs> so we did have a genetic test which was a bit more invasive than well we didn't you I did, did. <laughs> i did you took it like a boss i did you did well they actually extract a little bit of the um amniotic I, amniotic I hate, amniotic i hate this word amniotic fluid amniotic. so they literally <laughs> stabbed kel in the stomach with a big needle and took out yeah. some fluid from inside the um placenta um, from inside the yeah yeah, yeah 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 inside the placenta the amniotic fluid that fluid has cells that the um, baby has shed into the fluid mm -hmm. and the, then those cells can be checked for genetic issues yes and it all came back clear yes fortunately. thankfully yes it so came she's back just fine. tiny and then I don't have any infections I I'm doing fine um, so the the thing that might explain it is placenta might not and even that placenta seems to be working perfectly yeah. she's getting enough she's getting enough um well obviously not enough to grow as <laughs> she was supposed to but she's thriving well she may be growing as she's supposed to she may just Based be on one of the very few babies on the yeah. bell curve that end up very very small you know and that's yeah. the thing probability wise when you the average baby is dead in the middle, Yeah, you know, whatever it is, seven pounds, three kilos. Mm -hmm. But but 50% of babies are bigger than that, 50% are smaller than that. Mm -hmm. And so, you're obviously going to end up with out of that 50%, if it's 100 babies, mm -hmm. one of them being the smallest out of the 100. Yeah. And maybe that's her where she's as healthy as the rest, but she's yeah. the smallest out of the 100, right? Yeah, so she's uh, so far. What we know is she's she's grown and she's actually Kel's grown. grown. <laughs> yes, Kel's <laughs> belly's grown, so I'm that's a good so sign. Massive. <laughs> she went from the less than two, the two percent to like over. Well, the you got 12 you got percent. measured in Geelong again, and is that where they said it was the? You got measured in Melbourne. You went to the chil seventh children's percentile. hospital or the women's the hospital. The women's. Yes. They said it was over the seventh. Yes. Then you went back to Geelong a week later, and they said it was over the twelfth. Yes. But then when you went and had another meeting with the doctor at Geelong, he was like, um, "The Melbourne equipment is more sensitive and, yeah. and high tech, so we'll go with their reading." But so, she's on the seventh percentile now, which means that she is. Out of 100 babies, she's bigger than seven of them, or yes. she's the seventh um, biggest out of the 100. Yes. Wait, a tiny seventh biggest? Seventh, seventh smallest. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's a tiny little baby. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, there are things that we have to be ready for. Like, we don't know if she'll need to stay in hospital a bit longer because if she's born with any... I don't know. She struggles to breathe or anything else because she's small. Well, usually the lungs develop later. Yeah. And so, so that's why they stay in hospital yeah. if they've been delivered early because they have to we be hope on oxygen. It doesn't happen. Um, the other thing is I can't just wait for labor to start naturally. Yeah. Because she might not cope with labor. Yeah. So I have to be monitored and they will induce me. So the whole time I'll be in hospital and she'll be monitored the whole, you know, through, throughout the labor. 
So they know that if she's struggling in any way, yeah. I can just go for an emergency cesarean. Uh, again, don't want it to happen, but it's better that I'm in hospital and I'm taking care of, you know, being mm. taken care of. And um, so I think that will happen around the 38th week. Mm-hmm. 38 weeks well I, I think, think they'll induce you on week 38 if week she 38, hasn't yeah. grown to the point where they can safely leave her yeah. alone and which even I that, think is the 20th percentile I and bigger yeah and even that I asked last time the doctor which was the same doctor that was with me when Noah was born <laughs> mm-hmm. he didn't remember obviously but yeah. I remember him because the thing that makes me remember him I can't quite understand him like he has a thick accent and he speaks very fast so I'm constantly asking him to repeat himself. <laughs> anyway, um, so he said, look, to be honest with you, I don't see you going to labor naturally. Like, you know. Yeah, st- based wait, on my experience with yes. other people in your position. What I see is you are a very good candidate for a natural birth because you've had one before and yeah. that's what we want every woman to have. Mm-hmm. But we do have to induce you just to make sure this baby is born within like so this controlled sort of um, environment where we know she can cope with birth and she'll be taken care of when she's out. I'm like, oh, fair enough. You know, mm. <laughs> that's the least like, honestly, after the, the genetic uh, test, that's mm-hmm. the if I, we have to stay in hospital for a couple of days, <laughs> that's not. The, the end of the world. That's the easy part, yeah. Although I know that's very, if, you know, I, the, the hospital environment really affects me and I struggle, it's really hard and you can't be with me all the time oh, no, there. thanks, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's going to be hard on me. Uh, but again, just so just to know that your baby's fine mm-hmm. and she she's okay, she doesn't have any, you know, life-threatening sort of um, issues, that's really reassuring. Um, and now we're just waiting, waiting. I'm on week 32, mm-hmm. so only a couple more and Six weeks she'll left. be here. Jesus. Oh, my God, it's going to happen. Life is going to disappear. I think life will change a <laughs> lot. English, there'll be no episodes for like five months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just old uh, recycling old stuff. <laughs> no, well, this is why I'm trying to record a bunch of these episodes as well with you. Yeah, so, we've yeah, just yeah. done three today, the Moving House one, the Bilingual Babies yeah. and the Shoan episode so that we've got some ahead of time. That's good. Yeah, so, being, I don't have many... Um, tiny baby clothes and my, mm-hmm. my psychologist actually said you should get because her baby was you say i-u-g-r that's the uterine growth restriction yeah, like yeah inter inter uterine yes. growth restriction yes. so inside the uterus restricted yeah. growth she said oh my baby was was the same but I, yeah. the advice i'll give you is like buy a bunch of tiny baby clothes yeah. <laughs> we don't have any because i didn't i wasn't expecting her to be tiny and they don't tend so to be I, easy to get do no they? no 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 you can't just go into a store really and just be like give me all of your five Five tiny five zeros is, is quite zeros, hard to yeah. find. Yeah, <laughs> and then oh, I actually forgot to buy them yesterday. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> That's why we went to Target. <laughs> That's why we went to Target. Anyway, and then now I have to get clothes for her because I have a lot of things, but they are for chubby babies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, so it's just a bit more of preparation. Um, yeah. yeah. But I think it's all going to go well. I think she's just going to be a little nugget. She's yeah. going to be small. And they were saying the good news is that small babies tend to catch up anyway. So, it may they not catch be- They catch up definitely, yeah. It may not be an indicator of how big she'll be in the end. No, the Dr. Ed said, don't worry about, you know, if she's born and there's nothing concerning, she'll catch up, definitely. Yeah. Um, and the other thing was- um, that she's, she's proportionally small, so there are concerns when the head's too big or the tummy's too big and, like, they might indicate some sort of deformity. Or, but she doesn't have any of that. She's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I guess we're just waiting and hoping for the best and, yeah. <sighs> It'll all be over soon. In fact, this episode is probably going to come out maybe a few weeks beforehand, maybe on the dot. The other interesting oh, thing is that your birthday is... In yes. week 38. It's on a Wednesday, <laughs> which I think makes it more likely for, I don't know, I just feel like if I had to choose, like, do you ha- want to give, have give birth on Monday or on Wednesday? I'll probably say Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. But if they, 
Yeah. Th- it would be pretty interesting for you to have your birthday shared together, though. You probably no, wanted to have her own no, birthday. I want, my, I want to have my own birthday. And yeah. for the rest of my life, no one will remember my birthday because it will be her birthday. <laughs> well, they'll remember it because it's hers. And now even I will be like, <laughs> who cares? It's my daughter's birthday and the party will be for her. And, like, she'll hate me when Man, she's 12. The, there's going to be a oh, joint mom. party, whether it's beforehand or after by a few days. You're going to have a combined <laughs> birthday. Come on. It's not like, you know, if it was in the same month, people are just going to be know. like, Ah, screw it. We'll just have one birthday party for both yeah. of you. Anyway, she might be <laughs> be born on the 17th of March. And if I had to choose, uh, I don't know. I kind of like, I, I hate the fact that, well, you know, it's her birthday now. But I kind of like the, oh, wow, it's my birthday. I'm giving birth. So, mm. I have to think about it. What a birthday treat. Yeah. It, it brings a whole new uh, meaning to the, the word birthday. That's <laughs> profound. Wow. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Maybe that's where we should finish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Kel. Hope you, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this, especially you mothers out there who yeah. are, are going to be giving birth anytime And if soon. you've had a tiny baby, please send me some encouragement and some tiny baby clothes if you have some spare. Mm. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. See you guys. See you. Bye.